Hello there, this is Shell, and welcome to another VoxFX PSA. Today's topic, copying other producers. It's fairly common for newer producers, or even more experienced ones, to copy others. Cover songs, remixes, or even straight up replicating their work. Especially newer producers trying to replicate the work of more experienced producers. It's a great way to learn. It's great practice. You get familiar with a lot of the details that go into making a professional song or a professional production. And it teaches you a lot about like analytical listening and various other tools. But yeah, it's a great way to learn. Great way to practice as long as you're not obviously plagiarizing you're not claiming that you created the thing that you copied but beyond that it's generally okay especially when you're starting out it's the idea of reverse engineering it works really well for as a learning tool for various disciplines including music so yeah go ahead copy other people's work but with one important caveat don't try to get it perfect because i'll be honest with you you can't straight up you can't do it Unless the sound is like super basic, like it's just a super saw, you can't replicate someone else's sound exactly. So let's talk about an example to give you an idea of how difficult, indeed impossible, it is to replicate someone else's sound. A vocoder effect. So in order to perfectly replicate someone else's vocoder effect, you need to replicate the performance, the microphone that they used, the mic placement that they used, any sort of pop filter that they used, the room, the carrier's notes, the carrier sounds configuration, whether that's a synth settings or any other sound that could be recorded or programmed in a certain way, as well as the settings on the vocoder and the settings of any number of other plugins in the signal path. That is a lot of variables, and it is next to impossible to exactly replicate them unless you are the person who made it originally. So basically, you can't do it. You can't exactly replicate someone else's sound. Indeed, it's not a good idea to try and do so because it's demoralizing. You're always comparing it to the original, but you're never quite getting there. You keep trying and trying to get closer and more and more like the original, but you keep getting the same result, that it never quite reaches it. Because it's impossible. Unless you are the person who made the effect originally, you can't replicate it. And then you get frustrated because it's never perfect. You could end up spending days, weeks, months, even years trying to replicate the product of someone else, but you can't. And so it just makes you hate producing because I set out to achieve a goal, but I can't get there. So yeah, it's bad. Don't try to get it perfect. Try these two things instead. First, Instead of trying to get it perfect, try to get it close. Close enough that it resembles the original, that it's the same general idea, the general gist of the original. It sounds similar, it was probably produced in a similar way, like, oh, this was a vocoder effect, I'm going to use a vocoder to make mine, or something like that. Just sort of get it in the same ballpark. It's something that I use a lot in my line of work. You shoot for good enough, not perfect, because I'll talk about this more in another video, but perfect is the enemy of done. The more time you spend trying to perfect something, the longer it'll take to release the finished product. So yeah, shoot for good enough. After the point of good enough, you kind of hit what's called diminishing returns, which is where the amount of effort you put into it doesn't necessarily translate to an equal amount of improvement. Like you could be end up putting five hours beyond good enough into your effect, and it would only improve by maybe like 2%. The numbers aren't super specific, but point being, after a point, the amount of effort you put into it doesn't necessarily improve the product. And in some cases, just makes it sound different, not necessarily better. It's a skill that you have to learn to recognize when something is good enough. It's not always easy to tell that, but I'll talk more about that in a later video. But yeah, shoot for good enough, not perfect. And it's also important to note that something that is not exactly the same as the original isn't necessarily bad. Like, it could sound quite different from the original, but still sound good still have a good result. Like my wooden toaster voice that I recently used in my subscriber special. I think I did a pretty good job with that. I think it sounds good. Does it sound exactly like the original? No, it doesn't. But that doesn't mean it sounds bad. 
So that's one thing that you can do. Try to get it close. The other thing that you can do is make original stuff. Make original content. The advantage of making original content is that you're not comparing yourself to some unattainable goal. You have the freedom to do whatever the heck you want. It is much easier to make something that sounds good, as in pleasing to your ears, than it is to make something like X. It is much easier to make a good sounding dubstep bass than it is to make that one bass from Skrillex's Scary Monsters and Nice Sprites. So yeah, try to make original stuff. Or take someone else's ideas and put your own spin on them. A lot of cover songs do this. A great example of this is, uh, you know, The Sound of Silence. The original was made by Simon and Garfunkel, and that has a very particular sound to it. Then Disturbed came along and made their own cover of it, and it sounds quite different from the original. It's very much a disturbed song, but it is a cover. It has sort of a different spin on the same idea. But that notion of spinning someone else's idea is great because you get the value of reverse engineering, but you also get to make something that is very much yours in the process. Definitely worth your time. So long story short, copying other producers is a great learning tool, but don't try to make it perfect. You're better off getting it close and then moving on, like I talked about in one of my earlier videos about always trying to finish projects. It makes a big difference. Just get it done, move on, and you can maybe come back to it later. It's better than just laboring and laboring on one project for however long. You're better off just getting it good enough and moving on. But that's just my take on it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts or questions. And if you're new here and found this useful, I encourage you to subscribe. I release a new video every Friday to give you the tools and inspiration to make great audio. Now my next video should be out in a week. Until then, have fun and keep making sound.